Hello and welcome back to Analog Comics. This year in January one of my dreams came true and I got to visit Angoulême International Comic Book Festival in France. And I brought quite a lot of books home from there. And I've been meaning to do some kind of a walkthrough of those comics since there are a lot of good stuff in there. But my life has arranged it so that I've been so busy in my work during my free time that I just didn't have time to go through that pile. I'll show you the pile. It's pretty big and heavy and there's a lot to talk about. And since I haven't been able to find time to go through that big pile in, in one go, I thought that what if I find time just for a few books, go through them, show that and then repeat that later. So this is what it's going to be now. I'm just going to show you a few books and that's it. And the next video will be the same, unless I find longer time frame to show them all in one go. I decided to focus on this video on just two comic books and then a pile of ma comic book magazines I found there. This is a very interesting French thing that I want to talk about, but the books I'm, the comic books that I want to show you are these. And these two are also at the same time the biggest deviation of the plan I had when I went in. Well, actually I made the plan while I was in the shop. There's a massive shop in that festival. All the publishers are there and all the goodies are there. It's like the ultimate comic book store for European comics. It was like the source code for European comics. I've seen it, I've seen the matrix. And it was beautiful. But so these two comics, they are also extreme compared to each other, graphic wise, and I guess maybe also story wise, but they are also the furthest away from the rest of my pile, which I call European realism. This is not it, but we'll get, we'll get back to that later. But now let's jump into these books and the magazines. Let's start with the magazines. Well, one magazine is called Zoo, Zoo Le Mag. Uh, the, the whole Angoulême festival is in French and so are these. And that was one of my biggest fears going in there that I'm not going to understand anybody or anything, but it turned out to be th so that they actually spoke better English than me. So being tourist there was easy. And there was this one man booth displaying all these magazines and I asked him what they are and he explained that this magazine is something that they publish and uh, they give them out for free and this displays different uh, selected comics from the um, French uh, comic book scene And as you can see, we got here some, like a panel from the book cover and then a small text talking about what it is. They have advertisers, uh, advertisements here. Oh, this one's from Runeberg, one of my favorite writers. And, and the way it works is that I asked him, I asked this man, what does it cost? And he said, well, they're free, just take them. So I, of course, I took everything he had and he said that they publish, they print 70,000 copies of these. I think this is a monthly, monthly, like here's May, June 23. I think this is a monthly publication and 70,000 copies handed out for free. Sounds like a lot. So I asked him, how does this work? How, where do you get the money and so on? He said, it's all, it comes all from the ads and they have the similar magazine for manga, separately for manga. And that was 40,000 copies and they just hand them out. And the point here is that, as he said, that there are 6,000 comic books published each year in, in uh, 
France. And to be in this magazine is kind of desired thing as the, this is for the comic enthusiast. And this way you can get your head above the noise. And as you can see, not everything is from France. They have everything that is published in France, in French, but it can't be uh, from US market or any other market. But, uh, and, and some of them are of course also available in English, like a dungeon series here. I've seen this one, in, this is actually in English in my uh, buying list, has been there for some years now, to be honest. And it just keeps going. And then they have, usually at the end, they have some kind of bigger demo of some comic book. Like a longer bit. You see what it is. And then there is a longer bit of the. You get to see how it actually looks like. And like this series here is called Alone in English and available through Cinebook. So it has everything that they want to bring out. And of course, then they have these ads from, from the publishers, something that they want to push. Like here, I think this is a 40 years of 13 series. And they just want to advertise that. And this just keeps going and going. And I haven't read all of these yet, but they are really interesting. And let's look at this too. Daniel Glow's, well, the whole page is for him. This is an advertisement from Delcourt. Of course, not a French comic book artist, but well, no wonder he is wanted in, in, in France too. And on the first page, well, on the cover. And the good stuff just keeps going and going. Here, Torgar, are you to RAC? I think I saw Earl Grey talking about this book, something I'd like to get. So I have till at least 20 albums of Thorkal to read before I get to this point, but I will get there. It's a great series. Um, again, panel, cover, some text. And as you can see, it just keeps going. A really, really nice way to kind of get you interested. Uh, what I don't know, I didn't ask, how do they give them out? Like, is it, do, do you have to get it some, somewhere like from the comic book store? Or can you maybe even order this? Maybe someone from France can tell me if you're aware of this magazine. Here's a cool bit. They show this comic book. Uh, I think this is also available in English. I think so. A longer story, like a backstory about it. And then a bit longer sample of what you're going to get. And like what I see here, this already makes me want to buy this. So it's working. This was one of the comic books that I almost bought from the Angolan festival. It was very interesting too. And of course, Shiyars, one of my favorites. So just something I wanted to show you from that market and part of their culture very cool thing uh wish something like this would be available in english or in finnish or something but um i guess it's the size of the market and that's the way it works with them and then to first actual comic book in the bile the eye of odin by joshua dusard thomas tirello diego rodriguez now the thing about this is that this was uh, a deviation from my plan because my idea in the Angolan festival was not to find Batman in Fr French or manga in French, because those are all available in English. I went there to find stuff 
in France, from France or Franco Belgian scene or anywhere from Europe. I mean, I was after European comics that I haven't seen before. And even if I know about them, they're not available in any language that I know, like Finnish, English, or, or even Swedish that I understand a bit. I bought this immediately when I went in. This was, uh, it was also a very, very small booth and there were other comics piled on the table, but this was the only one standing upright. And I, I, I was already kind of primed to buy this before I even entered that comic book uh, tent where they sold this, because what, when walking there, I saw so many people going away with this comic. They, they had it in their back or their hand. So I kind of got interested. And, and since this was the first comic book I encountered after stepping in, I made the purchase decision just by having a quick peek inside. Just looking like this. And I decided, okay, Vikings, brutal blood, some Odin stuff. Yeah, I'll buy it. And then, oh, oh, by the way, they also gave me this art card with it. It's like this cardboard thing. And asked if I want to stay there and wait for the signing. But I didn't have time for that. And, and I'm not really big into signing any signature anyway. So uh, it, it was only later that I realized that this is not originally uh, a French book. This is from USA. I'm very bad at names, like remembering names. And if I was better, I would have remembered name of John Dussard. Oh, sorry, Joshua Dussard, because he wrote most of PPRD 46 to 48. This, this is a great book. And there it is. Two, I, I think at least two thirds of this book is written by him and like co-written by him and Ming Nola. So I already knew him. I just didn't remember that. So not a French book at all. And also Thomas Giarella, the artist. Uh, I didn't know his name. And I think he's been doing more covers for Star Wars and Conan. Correct me if I'm wrong. Again, very bad at names. The way I found out that this is not a French comic is I went to the, I, I started looking at this page and there was this bad idea. And I thought, hmm, that's an English name. So I Googled that and I still don't know what bad idea is. But what I think it is, is that it's uh, some kind of a very small indie publisher or crowdfunding or something in between or both. What I found out is that it might be some kind of four-man enterprise and but their publishing is very odd and I think they do it on purpose. I tried to find info about these smaller projects that they publish through bad idea and I, and I think they are quite small runs. I did found this in English, the original language, The Eye of Odin from eBay. This was originally published in five volumes and now it's collected into one hardcover book in Fr French. So, and, and this is kind of a matte surface and these are more clear. Let's see if you can see it if I turn it about like this. It's a very nice book. But then again, I think that if I'd like to have this in English, it'd be, I'd have to buy it from eBay. Not sure if I can get the whole series anyway, but I'm happy. And as you can see, the Eye of Odin means that there is this God theme mixed into this. And this is actually the only book that I haven't read, only a few first pages. And it's about this young girl who has a vision of Odin. And because of that, she is tied to some kind of uh, guest. They, they, um, 
quest, I mean quest, they, they start some kind of quest and take her with them. And it's really bloody, like you can see jaws coming off and heads being hacked off. Which I think fits the theme. It's a, a Viking theme, brutal stuff. But I can't comment on the content yet as I only read uh, <coughs> the first pages. Everything else I have already read. But I guess that's it for this one and then we'll see the other one. And the other book I'm going to show you is this one. I'm not going even trying to pronounce it, but I'll just show you the cover. Here it is. You can see that there are these shiny bits and then it's matte surface and I think that name, it means something like the Kingdom of Mutes or Silent Kingdom. This was something that my Google Lens was struggling to translate. Maybe if there are French speaking people, fans watching this, let me know what would be the best translation for the name. I'm guessing it's the uh, Kingdom of Silent or, or Silent Kingdom. Something like that. I found this by accident, complete accident. I mean, in Angoulême, it's possible to miss many things because there are thousands of comics available there. And they are displayed so that each publisher has their own booth. And sometimes you see a booth that might not be interesting at all. Like there was one booth that had mainly, or I think mostly translated Marvel DC stuff. So I had no, there, there was just no point going in there because all of that is available in English anyway. And well, I'm not interested of that content, but uh, this one was from the booth that was mostly uh, kind of focused on children or younger audience books. It doesn't mean that it, when it's for younger audience, it doesn't mean that you're not, you can't enjoy it as an adult. Asterix is one of the good examples of that. But that was clearly what they offered was something that was so so towards younger audience that I didn't see there any anything for me, basically. And as I was walking away, this dark cover kind of st stand out there like a sore thumb. And when I saw the character, I, I thought immediately that that this is heavily influenced by Tim Burton. So I had to look inside and lucky I did that. This is absolutely beautiful stuff. I mean, look, look here. Here they are descending to the um, underworld. And as you can see from the speech balloons, very easy to translate with the Google Lens. Just point your phone there there isn't that much talking, but the, even that is kind of funny, interesting to follow. Absolutely amazing panels. There is so much details in these panels that it's hard to read this fast. Although the book itself is not that long, but this good stuff, it just keeps going. And I found myself going, reading here, spending time here, going there, there, and then I went back. And there's something about this type of art that doesn't let me go. I absolutely adore this. It's about this girl, 12 year old, uh, young girl, who ends up accidentally to the land of the dead. She's not dead and she ends up there, but she shouldn't be there. But it's because of these two funny friends. These guys, they are collecting the last size, like, you know, when, uh, like last threats of dying. And the way this works that although the theme is about dying, death and afterlife, which kind of makes you wonder why is it in the children's section? Um, I don't know how it goes in France, but uh, this is kind of light. The story is in a way light. There's lots of humor in it. And these two characters, they are great. They're, they're friends and they keep messing up things. And there isn't that much action in the book, really. 
Th there is at the end, but a lot of the fun and the content comes from their discussions. And it has that Alice in Wonderland feeling when she is, you kind of go into that underworld with her, not knowing what you're going to see and lots of strange things just keeps happening like with Alice and you have to go along with it. And they explain stuff as, as the things happen, but with their own funny style. Now it says metamorphose on the cover, but when you go, well, there is metamorphose. Let's see, where is it? There was something that I didn't understand. No, nope, no, nope. here, the last page. It says editions oxymore, editions oxymore. And I thought that this was the publisher, but then it says collection metamorphose. I tried to find from internet what this means. I did, it didn't make any sense. I found one page with this and it seems like a lot of the books in that collection, whatever it is, they have very gothic or dark theme on them, but they were still, at least from the graphical point, they were for a younger audience, maybe teens, something like that. I don't know how this works. Again, if there are French comic fans watching this, I'm thankful for all the help in understanding this connection. But yeah, th that's how it works. You know, there are di different um, like uh, sections in the story and they start with this old real poems from from 1900s or 1800s. And I mean, look at that. Absolutely awesome. I was so happy to take this. The thing is that of course at the show, I couldn't read this. I just looked at the art and see that, okay, I'm going to at least like the art. But after reading this, I mean, this is already one of my best reads for this year's. Although nothing really happens in the book. It was just the tone of it. And if there is ever a continuation to this, I will buy it. Yeah, I mean, the ending kind of allows the continuation. Not sure if there will be any. Yeah, I won't show you everything of it, so you can find out yourself if you want to want to read it. But I hope that this gets an English translation. I think this would have um, audience outside uh, France also. And I guess that ends my first bit of Angoulême comic book haul. I'll go through them in these small bits, so I guess it's easier for me to handle it and get these out. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.